Hey guys, Tucket here, and today I'm going to give a brief summary and my opinions on the Balance Manifesto, and obviously keep in mind this is before the patch notes, so we won't know the full picture until we see the patch notes, and also a quick reminder before we get into this, Bay Class Thursday, 10pm UK, and we're going to be going through all the balance changes and recommending starter builds to everyone. So let's get into it. So first off, we have a whole big wall of text about two hands, slow attacks, and the changes they're making to try and support this. Basic TLDR, all melee weapon bases have been readjusted, um, and they've done some changes to base skills to try and basically promote two hand and push people to go more two hand, less one hand, less dual wielding. Um, one of the more interesting parts of this, which comes later on, and this will be a big uh, drive to want to play two hand and have these big slow heavy hits, is they reworked stun. So the way that stun works now is it'll be much easier to stun enemies, and stuns uh, on general will last longer without investment, but there will be a short cooldown before you can stun an enemy again. So you might be able to stun Shaper or stun Cirrus, but you won't be able to chain stun him. And I think that's a really nice way of balancing it because it adds a meaningful defensive layer that you can rely upon in your build. Like, I will, you know, stun enemies every now and again, but it doesn't just completely trivialize them by just turning the enemies off. So I really like this as a behavior. Now, another thing that's uh, happened is they've nerfed, well, depending on the, if you're Facebreaker, they nerfed it, but they, they took a, a bunch of base skills that had flat damage. They've removed that and now given it more scaling. So what's going to happen with that is it's going to make certain things like Facebreaker, which used to scale all that damage, or like uh, going dual wield and getting a bunch of attack speed and scaling that, that will feel much worse. Um, leveling early melee, I've heard a lot of people saying, oh, have they killed like leveling early melee? You're getting all this new Warcry stuff, so the new Warcry stuff should make up for like the lost flat damage. But yes, this will definitely hit some builds. Um, and Herald of Purity, for example, no one gives any flat damage, now just gives more physical damage. So this is also a buff for something like um, spellcasters. So now if you're a physical based spellcaster or a physical to uh, lightning, like divine eye, stuff like that, you've now got another option there. So that's pretty interesting for you. And also this is a big push uh, for hollow palm builds because hollow palms have loads of base scaling compared to base breaker, but you have the disadvantage that you have so few slots on your build, you won't be able to really utilize all the new Warcry stuff. On that uh, note, it's worth mentioning that Jewel Wield has lost the physical damage multiplier. So that's like 20% more damage just like stricken off Jewel Wield builds, which is a pretty big hit. Now, this is basically a massive nerf to current existing melee builds. But personally, I always find it really annoying um, because a lot of the reason why I don't play melee, I used to play a lot of melee back in the day, is I didn't like how like cookie cutter it felt. It was like, get two good weapons, one Anton shield never really felt that good. Um, unless you're doing some like poison stuff, there may be some like Ellie, Ellie builds where you go like Ellie foil and a shield. But uh, now you've got a bit more options with like sword and board, dual wield, two hand. Dual wield will still be the fastest, will have the most map clear, you still have enough damage that at the end of the day you just want as much attack speed as possible. So I think dual wield will still feel fine. Uh, but yeah, there'll be a bunch of PUE builds which just lost millions of damage from uh, these changes alone. Brands. Brands. I'm gonna have to see what it's like once all the tuning is done, once everything's been tweaked and fine-tuned on the alpha and it's dropped in the game. I'm really worried about brands. Um, I can completely understand why they're going through these changes, and I can understand why a lot of people might be very excited to play brands because of these changes, but this reminds me a lot of the mine rework. Um, and there's, if there's one thing that I really dislike, is when there's a play style in Path of Exile people like and enjoy, and then that skill is reworked, so that play style is lost, to then infringe on another build's play style. So with the mine rework, we lost the old mine play style, and it made mine feel much more similar to traps. And with the brand rework, a lot of the old brand uh, play style is gone, and now they play much more similar to traps, totems, mines. So that I'm not a big fan of. So what have they done? So brand recall, uh, no longer refreshes the duration of brands. So the old play style of brands was you throw out your bunch of brands at the start of the map, and then you run around like a headless chicken spamming brand recall, and your uh, brands chase you around the map. Um, so now what happens is you'll ha brand recall to reposition your brands. You're still brand recall for like big bursts of damage in single target scenarios, but your 
brands will be expiring more, so you're going to have to recast them more often. You can invest into brand duration, but generally think of it more like you'll have to recast brands every other pack. So you could be like, cast on one, brand recall into the next, cast on one, brand recall into the next. And also a bunch of the new brands um, want your brands to run off quickly. So there was the, I can't remember if it's called Penance brand. And it's like it builds up like kinetic energy that doesn't explode until the brand fell off. Um, so there'll be much more variety in how you play brands. But I'm not sold on it. I'm not sold on it. Maybe um, once it goes live, I'll change my mind. I'll think this is definitely the way to go. But yeah, I think one thing I would have liked, and I mentioned this to my chat and they didn't like it. I would have preferred if they actually added a cast time, like a short cast time or something to brand recall. So you still had this idea of like you set up your brands and then your brands follow you around the map. But it seems like the main issue they had was with how like passive it felt. Um, adding more incentive to make you want to recast your brands. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sold on this, but anyway, let's not spend forever on here. War cries. So Warcries have had a massive rework, and I think this is good. I often actually did use Warcries, even before last week when we got the instant Warcries on left click. I very regularly ran Enduring Cry on every build that fit it. I play a lot of uh, right side of uh, tree acro builds, so having Enduring Cry for the Endurance Shard generation was really good. So what they're doing now is Warcries are uh, much more powerful on an individual basis. They've reworked them, but added new ones will be much, much stronger. Um, they no longer share cooldowns, but they have a longer cooldown baseline and a much slower cast uh, time baseline. So if you want to really build around Warcries, you want to invest into it so you get all the new clusters that are adding. And the new clusters will make them like cast faster, have more duration, shorter the cooldown, give you bonuses. They say something like like rewarding the use of multiple Warcries, so I don't know, like increased damage or increased life or increased effect or increased cooldown. So it's kind of like... You know, like, the more war cries, the faster the cooldown, the more war cries, the more damage you get kind of thing, right? Um, but they, we still have a keynote being added, and from what we've seen, it will be somewhere in this bottom part of the tree. From what they tease, it looks like it'll be basically around where Iron Grip is, between Blood Magic and this Cluster Jewel here. And that will give you instant war cries, um, but your war cries now share a cooldown. It's worth noting that if you're playing a Warcry build, you don't want instant Warcries. So what you're going to want if you're a Warcry build, you're going to have like four or five different Warcries that buff up your damage and like you get their cast time as well as possible, but you want them to have a cast time. You're only going to take that instant Warcry node if you're using utility Warcries. So there are like two utility Warcries in my opinion, Enduring Cry and Infernal Cry. Infernal Cry is utility if you like need the Covered in Ash effect. Then all of the other ones, um, like, buff your damage in some ways. Like, you do double damage with the next hit, or you gain, like, increased AoE with the next hit, or all this other stuff, right? So, if you're, for example, I played a Puncture Bob last league, and I was in that part of the skill tree. Depending on how buffed Enduring Cry is, they said significant health regen when they talked about it. That would be a case where, if you're near the instant keynote, you would take it for, like, burst healing. Um, or if you're playing a fire based build somewhere in that part of the tree like burning arrow explosive arrow or I don't know just any fire build somewhere near there you might be like you know what I'll spend a couple of points I've got solar cells for an extra like two three points to get this keynote and I've got instant covered in ash for bosses so anyway. I like these changes they've also uh, reworked many existing uniques with walk related mods and they mentioned the warband shields the warband shields were always kind of interesting but pretty weak um, one of them gives onslaught generation, which is very nice for trappers, but the shield itself was terrible. So hopefully they've like crazy buffed that shield and I can shove it on my trap builds and I get like this fat enduring cry and this fat infernal cry, making my traps like do more fire damage or heals my character and I gain onslaught or whatever. There's there's not many trap changes in here, by the way, GGG. I would like to see a trap section, but that's fine. Stuns I already spoken about. Ascendancy changes. So uh, Hierophant, Chieftain and Berserker, they've made changes to them. This makes sense um, because they're doing a big push on brands. Hierophant has a brand node. Um, Infernal Cry gives Covered in Ash. Chieftain had Covered in Ash. And Berserk is all Warcry, Warcry based. So they're like reworking that one major node. Hopefully they make Chieftain more interesting. Chieftain's always been a very powerful ascendancy, but I've always found it a very boring ascendancy. 
Like, all of the nodes are individually very strong, but there's nothing exciting. I have the same issue with Sab. It'd be cool if maybe there was some kind of, like, Sab rework, which, while well, it's a very strong ascendancy, it's not very flavorful. An example of a fun ascendancy would be Trickster with the Escape Artist stuff. Occultist with the Corpse Explosions. Um, Pathfinder Sustain. You know, Impale Focus, Bleed Pops, Challenger Charges. You get the, you get the point. Basically, they, they make it a bit more exciting, a bit more interesting. Um, so that's cool. Also, and I'm very surprised by this. So the Necromancer's Corpse Pack Nader will now have a maximum of 200% increased attack and cast speed for consumed corpses. If you don't know, every time you consume a corpse, you get a ramping like steroid of attack and cast speed. They've capped it 200%. I was expecting them to cap this or nerf this ages ago because it's really, really broken and it can scale super hard. A cap of 200% is nothing because most builds won't reach that cap. And yeah, like, it's it's fine. It's fine. Like, if your build relied on that, you're fine. It's, it's definitely... You've still got enough of it, let's be real. Uh, they've shown off two new keystones. So Impaler, this is for like big two hands. Or basically just any slow hitting Impale build. Um, when your hits impale enemies, you impale nearby enemies. Inflict four impales on enemies you impale. So four additional, so that means you impale five at once. Enemies can't be impaled for four seconds after you impale them. So this is really good because you attack once into a pack. The whole pack gets five stacks of impale on them. You move on to the next pack. Um, and it's enemies can't be impaled after you've impaled them. So it's not like a cooldown on each application, it's a cooldown on the enemy. So this would be great for map clear or on impale builds, because it's just like one big hit, whole pack, five stacks of impale. And then for bosses, if you're only hitting like one every couple of seconds. This is also really good for just bosses you can't get high like uptime on, because it's one of those situations where if you've got to be like randomly running away, running forward, running away, running forward, you know, it's, it's good. It's good. I like that. So it's, it's, it's a nice change. Um, I like this a lot. Uh, imbalanced Guard. This is very interesting. This one, 100% chance to defend with double armor. Uh, maximum damage reduction for any damage type is 50%. So, this seems like a really confusing node. This is a really strong node in niche circumstances. You'll definitely see some very broken things coming out of this. Um, the way that armor works, it's like... The more armor you have, the more effective it is. And then the bigger the hit, the less effective it is. There'll definitely be some interesting cheese you can do with this. Um, but it's not a situation where you just like... You don't just take the node and you instantly become better. It's one of those things where the right person who's really thought about it will be able to make a very interesting build with this. So I expect to see some cool like Reddit posts a couple of weeks or months into the league. Once people really like have an idea. Or wait till a smart player works out what to do. So... It's cool. It's cool. I like that. Um, other passive tree changes. They talk about how they basically just added some niche stuff. So like Rage, Unleash, Corpse Situation, War Cries, Heralds, Banners. So any of the random like niche things that haven't been impact with, impacted much with, there'll be a new cluster somewhere in the tree. I wouldn't expect like the entire tree to be completely different. Just expect lots of these like cool choice clusters being dotted around. So we've seen a couple. We saw like Undertaker, which was one added over here. We saw the Elusive Cluster added over here. Just add like little sprinklings of spice, um, which will make certain play styles feel much sexier. Maybe they could add a cool one for traps. That niche play style, which could really use some love, by the way, GGG. Just saying. Um, so I like this stuff. This is cool. Uh, cluster Jewel changes. I really like what they did with Cluster Jewels. So I think Cluster Jewels are one of the best additions to Path of Exile. I like them a lot. A lot of people kept saying, oh, it's easy. The way you fix cluster jewels, you just stop them from stacking. Terrible suggestion. Because basically what that does is it screws over all the ethical builds while trying to deal with the unethical builds. So what they've done now is just the problematic nodes have either been reworked, um, rebalanced significantly, or they're limiting those ones. So rather than limiting all of them, they're just limiting like one or two, which they, they don't want to like fuck with the identity of. And then others, they've just reworked their identity. Now, obviously, because Warcry has had such a substantial rework, all of the Warcry stuff has been reworked. So if you're playing a Warcry Zerka, you're going to have to wait till patch to see if your build survived it or not. But you'll probably still have a good build out at the end of it. So that's cool. Um, same thing with brands being readjusted. Hopefully, we see some of the less performing cluster jewels. The cluster jewels didn't see much hype. Hopefully, they get a buff a bit. Um, for example, the trap uh, cluster nodes weren't that strong. 
They can maybe get boosted up a little bit. The trap mediums were kind of eh. Um, hmm. All the items from Simulacrum are still available. Obviously, they'll just be a bit rarer because, you know, access to Delirium. I think we'll still have more access to Delirium once you get into the end game content, but that early access will be pretty limited. Also worth mentioning that split personality is now limited to two. I'm very surprised by this change because they didn't limit voices and megalomaniac in any way. Voices seem to be the main problem. Sure, split personality is really good. But split personality, you actually had to like build your tree around. You can make the argument that you had to build your tree around voices, but you just took all the outside points. That's not very interesting. At least with split personality, you had to like sit and do some maths about working out how to do it. I'd have much rather limited the amount of voices you could use. Um, if not, you know, to one, maybe limit it to two or to three. Kind of like what they did with Grand Spectrums. But yeah, not a big, not a big fan of leaving voices as ridiculous as they are. You'll see lots of cheese immortal builds using voices. So yeah. Vol Molten Shell. Vol Molten Shell had been broken for a very, very long time, so it'd been in long need of an overhaul. Uh, lots of builds that I would traditionally uh, play as Acro Phase Acro, I was going armor on. I was like forcing armor into a bunch of builds, especially when I've been bouncing back and forth between hardcore and softcore. Whenever I was in hardcore, it's like, let's shove Vol Molten Shell in this build real quick. So yeah, what they've done, which I like, is they've given it a more multiplier um, instead of a flat multiplier to your armor. So this is a very nice reward for if you're playing an armor build and you're investing into armor, you're rewarded. But again, as they say, rather than just like slapping a granite flask onto every build, it's a nice way of doing it. Um, also, it mitigates a much lower percentage of damage while active, um, which is good. And it requires a greater cap of a greater value of armor to reach its cap. I would have lowered the cap personally, but basically it won't mitigate as much. It's harder to get a full absorb on it, and it rewards people who truly stack armor rather than people who just kind of like, you know, I'll oh, just have a little bit and get as much getting as possible. Um, another thing is Vol Molten Shell will now be overridden by all other guard skills, so a lot of people would have like steel skins or immortal cool setups that going while they were having Vol Molten Shell up at the same time. That's all gone. So now it's going to be much more of a situation of, are you playing a mana build? Go Arcane Cloak. Are you not really investing in your defense at all? Shove a Steel Skin in. Um, do you just want something generically powerful? Immortal Core. Also, Immortal Core generally is slept on a bit. Are you going hard into armor? Molten Shell. So I like this a lot. I, I like this stuff a lot. Cyclone. Uh, they removed the Sun Immunity from Cyclone. I think this is a nice change. Um, it was a change they wanted to make last league, but they decided last minute not to. I think it's definitely uh, the right decision to make. Um, Cyclone is a bit of a problem ability in the fact that it dominates the melee space and it causes all the cast on crit, the cast on channeling, all the summoners use it, all this other stuff. Yeah, um, you can still get stun immunity while channeling through, uh, time, uh, cluster jewels, sorry. There's lots of ways of building around stun immunity and, uh, yeah, just having it inbuilt to this skill didn't need it. I think it'd make much more sense for stun immunity to be on a channeled skill we have to stand still. Um, because it's like you're having to stand still and channel rather than the ability where you get to move around. So, anyway. Archmage. Archmage has seen some pretty significant changes. We won't be able to give our full opinions on this until we get the patch notes. I imagine Archmage builds will still be fine. A little disappointed by some of the changes, but again, this is just... I cannot say until I've seen it. So, what are they doing? It now provides less added light damage based on mana spent, so I believe it was 127. Uh, it's now down to 108, so it's like a 20-ish percent reduction uh, in the scaling. Still fine because it gives so much flat damage. Fevered Mind's been reworked as limited to one. A lot of people are freaking out about this line. We don't know what the rework is yet, so we can't really evaluate what it is until we see the rework. Maybe the way that Fevered Mind works now is it's like an Indigon kind of effect, where like it's ramping mana costs, um, or we don't know. So until we know what the rework is, it'd be better. Now, I know that I said I wanted to limit voices, um, but I generally don't like limiting... I don't really like limiting items, except for when it's really, really abusable and makes sense. I feel like Fevered Mind is like a cool way of... It's like the old ground... It's like some things are cool to abuse, and then voices are just like obviously too powerful. It's kind of like there's these things which if you get enough of this thing which is really niche, you make your build feel cool. Compared to 
if you just keep strapping AK-47s onto a tank. You know what I mean? I feel like voice is just like, it's just too much power on one specific item, but anyway. We'll see what the reworked Fever Mind is. Uh, Voidbring and Apeps now add a flat mana cost rather than percentage, um, which is fine. And they're adding a new cluster on the tree, which lets you increase the mana cost of your skills. So it's like, we've lost it from some of these items. You can now get it back on the tree. So it could be good. Arc Creature will probably still be fine. And uh, yeah, they're also reworking a bunch of uniques. Hopefully, uh, Deer Stalkers. Deer Stalkers is a really fun pair of uh, unique boots. If you don't know, they give you movement speed when you throw a trap. Maybe they could uh, make those a little bit more exciting. Just give me some trap love. I, it, GGG, give me something meaningful in the patch notes and I'll leak start traps. Something meaningful. Not like two. Two. Okay. Give me two meaningful things. Because otherwise they might just put like one bait one in there. Two meaningful things. I'll, I'll leak start traps. Uh, threshold jewels. Unique threshold jewels for jewel strike, magma orb, molten strike, and mag fireball have been changed. This really interests me. Really interests me. So if you didn't know, these felt very cookie cutter. Um, the Magma Orb one was you get more chains, more projectiles. Molten Strike was more projectiles, now it's chaining. Uh, I think the Jewel Strike one added melee splash, if I remember correctly. And the Fireball one just gave you more AoE the further your Fireball spread. Uh, Fireball I play a lot of because of Ignite Fireball. Magma Orb, I've been meaning to play Magma Orb for a lot of leagues now. So if they make this meaningful, I will play a Magma Orb build this league. Um, so now what they're doing is they're meant to completely change how the skill is built. Um, and hopefully they're exciting. Hopefully they change that in a meaningful way. And they're compensating the base abilities. So they're seeing increased damage, air utilities, compensate for the lost. So yeah, this, should, this could be cool. This could be cool. Depending on how they're compensated, these builds could be straight up just like buffed. Because there is a real cost to having to use these jewels. So the base skill might just feel better. And now you've also like gained two jewel slots. So yeah, it could be a huge buff to Magma or potentially. Keep an eye out for that. Especially with this next line here about slower proj. Slower projectile support gem now grants a lower value of less proj speed than before. This is because single target was massively multiplying with the close range of certain skills. They talk about ball lightning, magma orb, molten strike, for example. So again, the base skills have been compensated. Slower proj is now uh, less all or nothing. Um, I'm really in favor of this change. I personally don't like gem stopping all that much. So if you don't need to put like Slayer Proj in your Magma Orb or like swap it in and out and stuff and Magma Orb just feels way sexier, Magma Orb could be a pretty legit league starter. You know, we've also seen some changes to Crypt. I skipped it somewhere. Um, they've basically nerfed Crypt Multi across the tree and on items. And that's to try and like lower the gap between non-Crit and Crypt builds. Magma Orb, you're going to go like Ellie Overload. I don't know. I think Ellie Overload builds rejoice. I'm happy. Um, I generally don't play crit builds that often. I'm much for non-crit. Um, I just find crit builds kind of boring to build because they've got fairly like s established rooting. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to mess around with that. It should be cool. We're seeing a change to Shikari. And we've seen some uh, improvements to some AI targeting stuff. And we've seen a little headhunter nerf. So the Shikari thing, instead of making you... Um, Immune to poisons now half the duration of poisons. And registry from being poisoned while you have at least five poison effects on you. You can still do some stuff like Golden Rule uh, to get unaffected by poison that way. There's also the Apep Shield. So there's still some ways of building around it, but it's just like you actually need to build around it a little bit rather than just like clicking the Pantheon. I also like this because I didn't really take Shikari all that often. I've often been using just the Flask uh, Recharge one for bossing. So that's fine with me. So the Head to Nerf. This is nice. I like this. Uh, Hexproof now gives immunity to curses. So Hexproof is a stat on uh, rares. Um, and on top of fronting any curse from being applied. This means that if you gain Hexproof, you will immediately remove any curses on you. So if you're doing Inspired Learning or Headhunter stacking, and you're running around, you're using the Self Temp Chains gloves so that buffs last longer on you, you kill Hexproof mob, whoops, bye bye Temp Chains, reduce the effect. So yes, it's a nice sprinkling, it's like a little Headhunter nerf there. But yes, we really see the patch notes tomorrow. Overall, balance manifesto. As far as balance manifestos go, I'd say this is a pretty good one. Um, I like the two hand changes. I like the jewel changes. Brands, I'm not sold on them. I'm not like against it. I'm just not convinced. I'm not convinced on the brands. War cries, yes. Stun change, I think, is amazing. Ascendancy change. I mean, we need to see them, but I like the fact they're changing ascendancies. Keystones seem interesting. 
The passive changes, yes. Cluster jewels, yes. All right, we did it. Voldemort shell, yes. Cyclone, yes. Archmage, we need to see it. I think Archmage will still be strong, so tentative, yes. A unique rebalance. Unique rebounds always good. Another important thing I skipped over, sorry, at the end here. The circle rings are being nerfed. I've been calling for this for a couple of leagues now. They were way too stupid. If you don't know what the circle rings are, those are the synthesis rings you get from like Cortex and stuff. And uh, it was specifically the Herald of Ash and the Herald of Purity rings really stood out as being too broken. So, yep. Uh, Threshold jewels, yes. Slurp prod, yes. Small changes, yes. Give me some traps. Give me some traps to me. I'm Taki. Have a good day. Balance Manifesto, by the way. I bet Carve's video is at least one hour, 30 minutes. Bye-bye. Sorry, Carve.